Hi, and welcome to a Spider Strategies scoreboard training video. In this video, we're bringing together a wide variety of topics and putting them into a bucket that we are calling, Did You Know That You Can Do This in Scoreboard? To be a little more specific, let's share with you the agenda for today's video. It's an introduction to nine distinct and diverse capabilities within Scoreboard. Creating and using bookmarks, employing the search and find capabilities, reviewing related items, send to and or exporting from Scoreboard, reviewing info and history within Scoreboard, employing documents that you can upload into Scoreboard, taking advantage of the opportunity to employ linked measures, and again, employing notes within Scoreboard. As we cover each of these different nine capabilities, I'll do my best to keep some important questions in mind. What is it? Where is it? Why would I use it? And how do I use it? Let's jump in by addressing bookmarks. To demonstrate and discuss bookmarks, I've logged into Scoreboard and have landed at my Scoreboard homepage, which of course provides me with personalized visibility to my responsibilities, alerts that I have either subscribed to or that the scoreboard system has pushed to me, and in the far upper left corner in the black navigation pane under the personal category, you see that the home page is presently active. Directly beneath it is the bookmark section. Bookmarks in scoreboard are great because they provide me with the opportunity to create my own personal and customized library of scoreboard applications that I want quick and easy access to. You can see that right now my library is comprised of six different scoreboard applications. The first is an increased lead generation overview dashboard. The second is an increased ad clicks dashboard. Third is a revenue uh, perspective or objective here within uh, my financial area of the business. Moving down, I've got a financial overview report. I've got quick and easy access to the migrate to servers to cloud initiative. And lastly, one-click access to a document that I've uploaded into Scoreboard. All of these various applications live within my bookmarks library because I expressly put them there because I wanted the simple and easy one-click access to them, which spares me any rigors of going to find these various applications where they may originally live in the various different sections of Scoreboard. To show you how quick and easy it is to add applications elements to a bookmarks library, let's imagine a scenario where my counterpart Lisa, who is the manager of the customer support department, is going on maternity leave for several months and she's asked me to maintain and monitor some key elements within the customer support organization and the help desk calls that are coming in. She has shown me how to navigate into the customer support organization, the customer help desk scorecard, open the help desk calls area, and find the calls handled and the average abandonment rate and the percent calls answered, which are three key KPIs that she maintains and monitors and reviews on a very regular basis. In addition, there's also a, a dashboard that she looks at regularly and has asked me to again monitor the performance of her department via this dashboard. So that I don't have to remember how to navigate to those various elements in the customer support organization, what I can do is simply add them to my bookmarks library. I'll start by uh, adding this call center key KPIs dashboard to my bookmarks library. To do so, I simply open that dashboard and towards the upper right in the toolbar, there's a star for bookmarks. I'll click on bookmarks, the star becomes blue, and that dashboard has been immediately added to my library. Similarly, I'll return to the scorecards area, open the help desk calls KPI area, find the calls handled KPI that again Lisa asked me to monitor, and again, I'll click on the bookmarks star to make it blue and add it to my library. And very quickly and easily, I can simply go down the list and find the various KPIs that Lisa has asked me to maintain visibility to on a regular basis and simply one click add them to my library. 
when I'm done, I can return to my bookmarks library and see that sure enough, the call center KPIs dashboard, the calls handled KPI, the average abandonment rate KPI, and the percent calls answered KPI have all been added to my bookmarks library. If I'd like to categorize these, I can easily add a new folder, which I'll simply call customer support for Lisa and create that folder and then just to position these newly added applications I simply drag and drop them into the customer support for Lisa folder and voila I have created for myself very simple and easy access to not only the applications that I previously of course care about and need visibility to on a regular basis for my job but now while I'm filling in for Lisa I can easily access all of the dashboards and KPIs that she's asked me to monitor with simple and easy one-click access without needing to remember how to find them within the overall scorecard structure within the customer support organization. Before we leave the topic of bookmarks behind, just a quick note to share with you how easy it is to remove a bookmark item from your bookmarks library. Let's imagine that I want to remove calls handled. All I have to do is open it within my bookmarks library and go to the upper right and again click on the blue star. It will verify that I really want to delete this from my bookmarks library. This is of course not deleting the original application. It is just deleting the bookmark reference to that application again via my bookmarks library. Let's now move on to our next topic of discussion. Our next topic is search and find. To address the topic of search and find, I've again returned to my scoreboard homepage. If you look to the far lower left corner from the homepage within the black primary navigation pane, there is a magnifying glass icon called search. Search gives you the opportunity to do a universal search throughout the entire scoreboard underlying data repository. If I put in, in this case, the keyword revenue, it will return to me a wide variety of results that cover the entire spectrum and span of all organizations, all applications, all KPIs that exist within, again, the underlying scoreboard database repository. And I see that I've got, in this case, 99 different distinct scorecard elements that contain the keyword of revenue. If I find the one I'm looking for, I can click on it and will be drilled down immediately into that element of the scorecard that I desire to find using, again, the universal search capability. The universal search capability does differ from find, which is another similar kind of, you know, uh, searching capability, but find is very much more context and organization specific. So in this case, if I go to the financial organization and want to find something within just the financial organization towards the top of the secondary black navigation pane, I have the opportunity here to provide a find keyword. So if I want to find something that has the word profit in it, what this is doing is it's searching exclusively within the financial organization. It is not looking for any scorecard elements that live in any of my other various organizations such as sales, operations, information technology, what have you. It is only finding results that uh, contain the keyword profit and giving me that result set here. Once again, should I find the element that I'm looking for, I simply again click on it and it will open up, in this case, that uh, KPI area of net operating profit. So both of the two search and find capabilities work similarly in that they're of course searching through the underlying scoreboard database repository for elements that match your keyword or keywords, but they do them slightly differently. Again, search in the far lower left corner is a universal across all organizations and everything in the database repository, whereas find is limited exclusively to elements that it finds not only in the organization you're working with, but also within the section 
of uh, that organization, again, that you're working with. So if I were to go to the financial organization, click on dashboards and look for the term revenue, I don't find anything because there are no dashboards that contain the word revenue. And if I put in the word profit, similarly, no results appear within anything related to dashboards. With my apologies for the relatively abrupt end to that last section around search and find, let's move ahead into our next capability that we want to discuss, which is related items within Scoreboard. To begin our introduction to related items, I've again logged into the Scoreboard homepage. Related items are again quite a bit like bookmarks in that, as you now know, that bookmarks give you easy one-click access to a diverse range of applications and scoreboard elements that can originally live in all kinds of different areas within scoreboard. Similarly, related items exist within the three different sections under the data category of scoreboard. If we go to the scorecard section, and look at any given scorecard element, you'll see that towards the lower right corner, there is a related items pane. This exists at the scorecard level, at the KPI area level, at the objective level, and even down to the KPI itself level. Similarly, in the initiatives section, any particular initiative, if you scroll down towards the bottom, there again is a related items pane which again gives you access to items that have been related to this particular initiative. Once again, within the documents section, if a document uh, exists, you can again define a related item to it. The idea behind related items is kind of a fraternal relationship between currently existing scorecard initiative and document elements of scoreboard. And what they try to portray is what one thing either impacts or in turn might be impacted by. So if we were to look at the fin financial KPI area of our mobile world scorecard, I'll see down towards the lower right in the related items area that there is a financial overview report. The idea behind this is as I'm viewing the financial KPI area, I might want some deeper information about my financial performance. And I know that I've got a report already existing called financial overview. I can set it up as a related item, giving someone who was viewing that last financial KPI area the opportunity in one simple click to dive into this detail level report to get more information. Similarly, from that same financial KPI area, there is an, another dashboard, which again might be helpful for someone to be able to jump right into to get a broader perspective, again, on financial performance. And again, these uh, related items exist within the scorecard section or the initiative section or the document section. If, if we take a look at another example of initiatives here, we have an initiative to migrate servers to cloud. Down towards the bottom, there are two existing related items, one of which actually comes from outside of scoreboard. It's a simple URL link out to a Wikipedia page about cloud computing. Back within scoreboard, we also have set up a relationship or related item out to an increased revenue visibility to an increased revenue KPI area or objective. If I believe that our initiative to migrate servers to the cloud may also impact or be impacted by our IT effectiveness, I can set up another related item by going to the upper right corner of the related items pane at the bottom of this page and select from the extensive list of scorecard and non-scorecard elements that can be related to this Migrate Servers to Cloud initiative. I'll click on the scorecard item, navigate out into the mobile world organization, open up the organizational capacity uh, KPI area and find the improve IT effectiveness KPI objective and click add. So immediately that improve IT effectiveness objective has been added as a related item to this migrate servers to cloud. 
If I click on it, I will of course drill into that improve IT effectiveness objective. And please note that when I set up that relationship going one way, it automatically set up the reciprocal related items relationship down in the lower right corner, allowing me again with one simple click to get back to the migrate servers to cloud initiative where we started. So again, the related items relationship is again sort of a fraternal back and forth relationship between disparate scorecard or scoreboard elements and applications. And again, these related items exist in the scorecards section, the initiatives section, and the documents section of scoreboard. Let's move on to our next topic. The next capability that we'd like to discuss is the send to or export capability. While we're discussing send to, I'll do my best to also integrate a discussion and introduction to the info and the history visibility and capabilities within Scoreboard. As with the previous vignettes, we'll start at the home page of Scoreboard, and I will immediately navigate away from the home page link in the upper left down into the bookmarks area. And I'd like to introduce you to the existence of a toolbar in the upper right corner of the bookmarks section. Similarly, within the dashboards section of Scoreboard, if you again look to the upper right you'll see the same toolbar with four buttons for bookmarks, which we've already discussed, the send to, which will be our topic of this particular uh, discussion, the info button, and the history button. And I just would like to reflect that virtually all of the sections of scoreboard, from dashboards to now charts and reports to briefings, Briefings has a different, slightly different presentation towards the upper right, but down a little ways, there's the send to button as well, and the info and the history, as well as the scorecards section, initiatives, and documents section, all present you with this toolbar towards the upper right corner. Again, our focus here during this particular uh, section is to talk about the send to or export capability. I'll begin within the scorecard section and go to the send to button. Note that if you click the send to button, you are presented with an extensive list of destinations where you can send this view of what in this case is our mobile world scorecard. I can send it to an internal briefing book. I can send it to a printer. I can create an Acrobat PDF version of this view, a PowerPoint, a Word document, and or I can send this directly to someone via email. Similarly, if I navigate over to the KPIs tab, the KPI view, which is more of a tabular view of the same information that was just presented to me within the overview tab, if I return to the send to button, please note that the menu of destinations is expanded to include also Excel because it now makes sense to send this again tabular view of all the information out to the tabular nature of Excel and I can also uh, send this out to create a scorecard import file or a KPI value import file. So the point here is that virtually all of the views of scoreboard virtually no matter what section you're in, except for the home, the one exception here is that on the home page there is no send to button. But all of the other sections provide you with the opportunity to send what you're viewing out to a different format. So in this case if I were to select the Acrobat PDF for this Mobile World Scorecard Overview, it will immediately create for me a PDF version of that same view, the overview of my mobile world scorecard. And I've got a multi-page view where I've got the speedometer, the description, a few details, the overtime line graph that I was viewing, as well as a table of information of the various scores that are represented within that chart or graph. And then again, a summary of the data that's being used in the calculations and the presentation of any related items. So that's just one example 
of something that you can send uh, something like a scorecard out to. And the same thing applies to, for instance, with dashboards. If I've got a nice KPI history dashboard that I might want to send out to PowerPoint, again, I can simply click on the Send To button, go down and select PowerPoint. Once again, it will cr immediately create for me, in this case, a PowerPoint version of that dashboard slide, which is available on a single click in the lower left corner. And I can bring up that newly created PowerPoint slide showing me, of course, the same KPI history uh, uh, dashboard that I viewed within Scoreboard. One other minor note is with regard to dashboards, if you click again on the Send To, you do have, again, another additional option here, which is the second choice down, which is to share the dashboard. If you select Share Dashboard, what you're able to do is define, of course, what time period you would like this dashboard to reflect. So I'll leave this right now at the current period. You also could select by date and specify exactly specifically what month you want represented in this dashboard. For my purposes, I'll leave it at relative and then I'll create the link. What I get are two um, representations of this link. The first falls under the share category. This allows me to send them a link to this dashboard so that they can view it in its static format that I generated when creating that share dashboard. Another option here down in the HTML area is to uh, provide an iframe code that allows you to embed this dashboard in another web page. Once again, the result is a static view of the dashboard, but it can be visually embedded within, as it implies, another HTML web page. While we're still here and addressing, in this case, the share to, or sorry, the send to opportunity from the toolbar in the upper right corner, let's also take a look at the info and the history buttons. To review these, I'm going to jump in the far left into the scorecards section of scoreboard. And again, just start at the mobile world scorecard. If I have returned to the far upper right corner and click on the info button, it will provide me some basic information about this mobile world scorecard and I see its name whatever type of description has been provided its unique system ID what type of element it is within scoreboard and what type of weight it carries if I move a bit further down I can do the same thing with the financial um, KPI area again click on the I for info similarly I get a name description its ID its type and again its weight which is of course 25% uh, it's one of the four KPI areas that are rolling up to the mobile world scorecard if I want a little more information about some different types of uh, elements within scoreboard such as KPIs I can get into a scorecard where I am actually providing data such as within the financial uh, scorecard under the revenue theme or KPI area I've got a product revenue KPI if I'd like some detail information about the product revenue KPI I again can click on the info button and see all of the information that scoreboard has to share with me about this particular product revenue KPI. In this case, I have more details to share because, again, this KPI just has more properties set up behind the scenes within scoreboard. I, again, see its ID. I see its type, its weight, what type of scoring is being employed, what calendar periodicity has been assigned to it, its data type, aggregation type, its currency, and again, any settings of actual values, red flag values, or goal values, as well as, if I scroll down a little further, who has been defined as the owner or updaters of this particular product revenue KPI. While we're here and having reviewed information about various elements of our scoreboard um, solution, let's also take a look at the history button. So the last button out to the right of our, again, toolbar in the upper right-hand corner is history. If I'd like to understand what has occurred historically with this product revenue um, KPI within my, within my scorecard and within scoreboard, I can simply click the history button 
and I can review either recent or current period events that have occurred, or I can click the All Events button to view a comprehensive history of what has occurred with that particular product revenue KPI over time ever since it came into existence. So it starts with it being created back on November 30 of 2016. And of course, since then, it's just a historical reflection of who has impacted, who has, let's say, changed anything about that product revenue KPI, who has updated it, what have you, who has maybe provided any notes or deleted any notes associated with that KPI and what have you. So this is a nice extensive overview log of activity on and around the product revenue KPI. With that said, let's move on to our next topic. Our next uh, capability that we want to discuss is a nice brief one. It's documents within Scoreboard. As usual, we'll start at the Scoreboard homepage. You've already seen documents earlier in this video, but you'll know that it, so now you know that it lives under the data category under the black primary navigation pane. There is a specific documents section. I'll click on documents to open up the documents section and review with you that at the present time in my documents library, I have a user guide and I have an export image. The whole premise and idea behind documents within scoreboard is your opportunity to upload different types of documents into the scoreboard data repository so that they are quickly and immediately available to you for access within scoreboard in a variety of ways. To add a document to your documents library within scoreboard, it's very simple. You simply click the add document button at the top of the secondary navigation pane, provide a name of document here, in this case, name your document, whatever you want to call it, and then click Browse to browse out and find your document. In this case, I'll up to upload a Spider Strategies training and document document. And then once it is presented to me here, I will confirm the name that I provided, document here, confirm that I'm pointing to the correct document, and click Done. It will upload my document into, again, the scoreboard document repository. And it is, of course, now presented underneath the user guide, the export image. And here's my newly added document here. As we saw earlier in the bookmarks section, if I wanted to categorize or organize my collection of documents within my documents library, I can certainly create a new folder. Uh, we'll call this name of folder here and click create. So I can again, you know, create as many different folders to organize and categorize the content within my library. And then it's just a simple drag and drop to place the different documents into the different categorized folders that you may desire to create. Once those documents are in your documents library, they are of course readily available on a single one click download using the blue download button. Uh, and again, as we discussed earlier, if you'd like, you can add related items to this document. Um, you can also create and add new revisions for this document is as it may change over time in its original location. If you'd like to add newly updated revisions into your documents library, you could certainly do so. And again, the beauty of having something like this in your personal documents library here is that it is now readily available within a scoreboard. So again, if I'm out looking at a, a chart, uh, sorry, a scorecard element, and let's say that within the internal processes KPI area, I'd like to add a related item that points to that document. Note that in the related items menu, one of my choices is document and I can readily go out here and find my newly added document here document and click add and it is now a related item to that internal processes KPI. So that's one example of how of the benefit, if you will, of using the documents library is it empowers you to create relationships between documents and already existing scoreboard application elements. 
also of course is just the quick and easy ready availability of the documents where you're not required to go out and find documents outside of scoreboard so that you can open them up and consume whatever helpful information they provide that takes care of our quick review of documents let's move on to our next capability the next capability we're going to address is linked measures before we move into the linked measures, I should point out that when I use the term measures in this case, I of course am referring as well to KPIs. Our nomenclature for the two, um, you know, KPIs and measures are very much interchangeable. So within the world of scoreboard, we're talking about linked KPIs. We'll start as usual at the home page of scoreboard. The linked KPIs are visible and accessible and set up within the scorecards section of scoreboard. So I'll click on scorecards on the left and we'll re review the existence of some linked KPIs and then show you how easy they are to create. Within our Mobile World Inc. organization, it reflects sort of a classic balance scorecard type um, approach to management here where we have four different um, KPI areas of financial, customer, internal processes, and organizational capacity, each of which are provided with scores and information from underlying objectives such as increased revenue, which in turn, of course, are provided score information from underlying KPIs like product revenue, training revenue, and book revenue. Note that next to these KPI names, there is a visual indicator that is two chain links. That's what that little icon is, is intended to portray, is two links of a chain. So the product revenue in this case is actually linking out to another KPI that lives within a different organization of the scorecards under the Mobile Inc. corporate uh, performance management system. We've actually looked at product revenue earlier within this video. But before we go into the source of product revenue, let's just show you that if I click again on the info button for this link to product revenue, the other KPI, if I click on info, you, it shows you right here that the source KPI is actually product revenue. And if I want to investigate details or the setup of product revenue beyond what I see here with the info that we reviewed earlier, I can simply click on product revenue and you'll see if you look towards the upper left, I've now been drilled or navigated down into the financial organization within the financial profit and loss scorecard under the revenue area I now am actively highlighting and reviewing the product revenue KPI. So the premise or the story here is that mobile world tier one level reflection of performance, the Mobile World Inc. organization, and its financial KPI area and its increased revenue objective, again, is linking to the original product revenue. Now I'll show you how easy it is to create a linked KPI by actually editing, I'll click edit, and then I'll remove the book revenue that presently exists. So I'm highlighting this book revenue, which again is another linked KPI. And you see just before I get rid of it, towards the upper right, you see that its type is a linked item. But I'll just go ahead and delete that book revenue KPI, and then I'll recreate it. So within the increased revenue objective, I'll go up to the top and click New Scorecard Item. Again, moving over towards the far upper right, I'll go to the type where it says KPI, and note that I can select Linked Item. When I click Linked Item, the interface changes. It's no longer looking for me to set all the particular and specific properties for a brand new from scratch KPI. It is now saying, well, what should this link to? So in our case, like we did before, we'll navigate into the financial organization, into the revenue area, and find, in this case, the original book revenue KPI. I'll highlight it towards the lower right, and I'll click Create. And then towards the lower left, I'll click Done. And reflect on the fact here that under the increased revenue objective, I now have a new instance of book revenue. If I want it to be repositioned, I can just quickly jump into edit mode, drag it up slightly above total revenue, 
and be done. So again, if I click on book revenue here, I'm going to get a reflection of what's happening with the underlying book revenue. Now at this point, having just created that book revenue, the data has not yet been recalculated. Let's give it just a second to catch up. And after giving it just a moment to catch up and um, provide the data that is reflected here in this linked KPI, I do see that I have performance values for book revenue, again, which are all being fed from the underlying book revenue that li physically lives in the um, financial organization under the mobile world corporate umbrella. Let's now move on to our next and last topic for discussion today. As you've seen coming, our last topic or capability to, dis to discuss today is notes. Notes are a great feature of Scoreboard because they provide the opportunity for ad hoc text-based communication, interaction, and collaboration amongst Scoreboard users. I've started as usual at the home page of Scoreboard, but we'll immediately navigate over into the data category and the scorecards and initiatives sections of Scoreboard because that's where notes really live and are associated with underlying scorecard elements. I've logged into the Mobile World Inc. organization and I'm viewing the Mobile World scorecard. If you look to the bottom on the lower right, you can see that there is a Show Notes button. This allows me to expand and open a pane, which has always been there, that gives me visibility to notes that have been associated with the Mobile World scorecard. Please be aware that visibility to this notes pane is going to be dependent on your screen resolution and how much real estate you may provide to something like this notes pane within Scoreboard. I've temporarily adjusted my resolution to show you that right now by default I can see the notes pane without needing to expand it. If I dial back in to the resolution that we started with, once again that notes pane is collapsed but is always available to me at the bottom via a simple click to expand and a simple click to, to close. Similarly, within the initiatives section of Scoreboard, we have looked at a couple different initiatives throughout this video, and along the bottom in each case, there has always existed the Show Notes button that again allows me to expand the Notes pane to make it visible. Before we move on to the creation and updating or responding or replying to alerts, it's also important that you know where alerts can be seen elsewhere within Scoreboard. From my home page, if I'm an updater of any KPIs, I can open the KPIs I update. And I can see that for these various KPIs of product revenue, training revenue, and book revenue that I'm responsible for updating, out to the far right, there's a notes icon. I can easily see that the product revenue uh, KPI has an existing note because it's colored blue. If I click on it, I'll get a reflection of all the notes that have been applied to that product revenue KPI. And I'll close that. If I click on the training revenue KPI and its notes icon, I see that no notes have yet been applied, but I certainly have the opportunity at this point to add a note. We'll come back to adding notes in just a minute. The other place where notes are readily visible and available is within dashboards. Again, the notes are tied to or sourced within the scorecards or initiatives foundational level elements of scoreboard, but they can certainly be reflected on presentation applications like dashboards. In this case, you see that we've got a strategic communication dashboard, including a fairly long list of notes that have been associated with the elements of this dashboard. Again, I have the opportunity right here within the dashboard to add a note. Again, we'll return to adding notes in just a minute. But at this point, we've shared with you the locations where notes are accessible within the scorecard section, the initiative section, the home page and the update capabilities via the home page, and of course, as we just discussed, within dashboards. Now that you know the where to find alerts within Scoreboard, let's return to the how to work with alerts. I'll go back to the data category and open the scorecards section, one of our primary foundational levels of Scoreboard. And again, return to the mobile world scorecard that we briefly reviewed earlier and the existence of a couple notes here for this mobile world scorecard. 
To create a new note, simply click on the extremely intuitive Add Note button. This, of course, gives you a simple text-based interface to uh, provide your note as desired. And then simply click the Add Note button in the lower right corner. Should you want to respond to an existing note, such as the second note in what we see here is the here is a note that is specific to April of 2019, if I'd like to add an additional reply to the one that already exists, I simply click towards the lower right hand corner to add a new reply. And then of course, click the reply button. And then close that note interface. An important nuance of notes, whether they be add notes or replies to notes is your opportunity to control the calendar periodicity to which your note or reply is applied. Uh, in the upper right hand corner of any add note or reply interface there is the calendar period selector similar to what you see in a variety of screens throughout scoreboard and in that calendar period selector you have the opportunity to define a note to be an all-time note or uh, dependent or tied to specifically a given periodicity of monthly, quarterly, and yearly, and so forth. So if I want this note to be ever present across all times, I can simply select the all time choice, confirm that choice, and then provide my note. And then as before, just click the add note button in the lower right hand corner. As you would expect, the result of that effort is a note that is of course present during the time period in which I define the note, in our case April of 2019, but as I use the calendar period selector in the upper right corner to navigate forward ahead in time, I see that that note that I just defined as an all-time note is always there no matter what time period I navigate into, whether it be in the future or into the past. Those same principles in working with notes apply in the initiatives area. We can jump into the initi initiative section and again reflect on the existence of the show notes pane collapsed down along the bottom and you'll see that the interface is identical to what we just saw within the scorecards section of the scoreboard. So really no difference there. To move back to one of the other areas where the notes are available to us to define and create, you'll recall on the home page if you had KPIs that you update, you can access a notes um, interface from within the KPIs update interface via the home page. If I wanted to apply a note for the month of, I'll move here in time, I'll just move ahead in the upper right hand corner to the month of let's say December uh, 2018 for the training revenue KPI, I can click on the notes button and I'm presented with, again, effectively the same interface that we saw in the scorecards and the initiatives sections, where once again, I can add a note, again, provide my note text. Again, I have the opportunity to use the calendar periodicity selector in the upper right hand corner in the same way that we saw within the scorecards section of scoreboard. And again, I just simply click add note to add that as a note and then I can close the notes interface and I can see that to the right of training revenue the notes icon is now blue indicating that a note exists. If someone opens that note they will have again the opportunity to reply to that note similar to what we saw earlier. The last area to discuss with regard to notes is within dashboards just so that you're clear on how easy it is to create uh, a notes widget on a dashboard. Within the dashboard section of scoreboard, I've navigated to a dashboard called Mobile World Scorecard Overview to add a note. You can see that presently there's a speedometer and a couple of performance gauges on this dashboard. I'd like to add a note on the dashboard as well. To that end, I'll click the edit button at the bottom of the black navigation pane to enter into edit mode. Once in edit mode, I'll click on the add widget button and scroll to the bottom and click the notes selection. Understandably enough, it points you to either the scorecard section or the initiative section, where again, notes really fundamentally live. In our case, we'll go to the scorecards item section, 
open up the mobile world scorecard and it, whatever notes are associated with that scorecard which are the ones we just worked with have now been added to our underlying dashboard i'll jump into full screen mode quickly so that i can just easily navigate and reposition this newly added notes widget on this dashboard. I'll then click Save, exit full screen, and remove myself from edit mode. And you see that I am now able to view all of the notes that have been associated with that mobile world scorecard. To access and review any of the notes on this dashboard, you simply click on the note and it will be opened in its own unique window allowing you to review the nature of the original note as well as any replies that have been provided and also gives you the opportunity to add another reply should you desire. If I'd like these notes to be shown in their entirety directly on the dashboard, there's a great new feature in Scoreboard allowing you to do so. To take advantage of the new feature, I'll again re-enter edit mode for this dashboard. Just to make this easier to see, I'll click on the full screen button towards the upper right, and I'll click on that newly added notes widget. I'll go towards the upper right and click on the settings or option button for that notes dashboard widget, and we'll go down to display as and choose full notes. You'll see that immediately the presentation of these notes has changed, empowering me to view the entirety of the note within a consolidated pane. It shows me the notes as well as the replies. If I'd like to reduce the quantity of information that is being shown here within this newly changed widget, I can also click on it again, re-enter the settings or options area, and go to the showing selection and remove, for instance, the titles, maybe the controls, the author, and maybe the calendar period. So I've reduced the quantity of information that is here, and then I can click away, and again, review the results of my choices in terms of what I want to present for these notes right on the dashboard. When I'm done, I simply click Save in the upper right-hand corner, exit full screen mode, click Done, and again, review my work and make sure that it looks the way I want it to, and gives me the opportunity to see those full notes and the associated information I'd like to see with each of those notes. This completes our introduction and review of notes in Scoreboard. Before we let you go, let's go back and just review what we covered today in this training video. I won't take the time to read this entire list of our agenda at you, but remember that we just covered nine distinct capabilities within Scoreboard. We hope this has been helpful for you and has given you an introduction to the idea of did you know that you can do this in Scoreboard? Thank you for watching. We hope this video is helpful for you. And if you have any questions for us, please feel free to contact, contact us anytime at learn at spiderstrategies.com. Thank you.